Hey, welcome to another episode of the Black Guy With Tips podcast. I'm your host, Rod. Joined as always by my co-host, Karen. And we're live. It's uh, Monday night. We're ready to do some, some podcasting for y'all. Find us everywhere you get your podcast. Search the Black Guy Who Tips. Leave us five-star reviews on Apple Podcasts. We love reading those on our feedback show that we do on Saturday. The official weapon of the show is... Folding chair. Folding chair, that's correct. And the unofficial sport... Bullet ball. And bullet ball extreme uh all right this episode is just gonna be kind of quick and dirty i think we'll see maybe an hour and a half from now we're still talking about who knows but uh i <laughs> i didn't really put it in too much of a format because i only really wanted to talk about a couple things okay and um you know they're they're important things of course but you know if we get the other shit we get the other shit but it's not like major Necessary, shit here right um, the first thing I wanted to say, because I did promise to talk about two things. One, I want to talk about that paper about social media, see if we can glean anything yes, from it. I think that's kind of cool. Let's go. Uh, and then the other thing, which I'll talk about first, uh, we, we'll get into. Uh, have you seen this um, this thing with Kamala Harris where she's put out the um, the like black man agenda type thing that that every that that certain black men were asking for i think i may have it's a list i think but i yeah. but but i i didn't be paying any attention i saw a tweet it had like five items in the tweet um that she unveiled now this goes full circle back to you know barack obama was talking to a group of black men who uh, presumably are um, voting for Kamala Harris. They're at a support event for her. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming these are not on the fence guys. Mm -mm. We kind of talked about this a little bit Saturday. Um, And, you know, I still basically feel the same way about it, which is, you know, um, while I'm not this incensed, like, there there are people that just kind of already don't fuck with him. And then this is more evidence of why they shouldn't fuck with him. And, and there, I know a lot of, not a lot, but I know a few black men like that. And, you know, I'm not challenging their blackness or whatever. They feel that way. That's fine. I'm not really a feelings guy in that way when it comes to politicians. So at no point have I ever felt disappointed in him because I've just mm-hmm. never, I never built that man up to be anything but what he was presenting himself as. Right. I never saw him as the pro black activist guy. I'm not saying he's not pro-black i'm not saying he didn't do activism but i like when they were selling me that as part of like why you should vote for him i was just listening to what came out of his mouth i i can't explain this anymore i I, honestly if you've been listening to the show since 2008 or whatever when he first came on the scene um and when we were we started our show in like 2010 or so so i i feel the same way that i felt back then i i don't I know that the business of politics is a very emotional business and it works on people. And in that way, I recognize the good and the bad of it. And I can watch it the same way that I imagine Tony Romo can watch a quarterback play and be like, that was a good play, but not necessarily feel like an emotional attachment of like, I hope this play works out or I hope this play doesn't work. You know, like it's not, I'm not rooting for and against a team necessarily in the way of like being emotionally invested in the people that are politicians as much as I'm rooting for like their policies, who will be better for the country or for whatever position they occupy. What are the things that I would like to see happen in the country? And is it even possible to accomplish that? What gets us closer to that? What does it? That's the only way I really can view politicians. Um, and I still can enjoy the surface level enjoyment of it. Like I'm not like, I love the inauguration when Obama won. I love, uh, yes. um, you know, I love the night he won. You saw Jesse Ooh. Jackson crying and shit. So it's not like I have no attachment. I I think I'm just able to take the good and not the bad. Well, I'm like, yeah, because he's not my friend. He's a he's a fucking he's a guy that's a politician that comes from a side of life that I have not experienced um, in a bunch of areas. Right, and also it's one of those things. So I'm like you. I listened to the words that came out of his mouth. A lot of people didn't. They got so mesmerized by hope and change, and particularly a lot of white people got so wrapped up in him, quote unquote, ending fucking racism. Which I was like, that's mm-hmm. that's some bullshit, mm-hmm. you know. Um, 
And I also understand that he's the president of this United States of America. Mm -hmm. You know, like <laughs> you have to look at the bigger picture and, you know, he's a president and the president can only do but so much. And they have to sell you these things in order to get the position. That's understandable. He's not special. He's not new, unique. He's not doing anything that and any other president, you know, hadn't done before. But for some reason, when it comes when it came to him, people, they 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 believed what they wanted to believe and they saw what they want to what, what they wanted to see. And whatever their feelings were, they pushed these things upon him. Like he said he was going to do these things that he never said he was going to do in the first place. And then they get sad, mad, disappointed and all this shit. But I'm like, he never promised these things. Yeah. And and like I said, I I know politics is emotional. And I think a lot of times I end up a bit detached from what so many people are feeling. You know, like this is the same reason I was like, I don't know why. But like when I was like. I'm not sure Biden should drop out because I was like, if if this is a emotional thing and y'all go, well, it's about my emotions. He dropped out, but they better pick, uh, better not be Kamala Harris. That's just an emotional thing. I, I don't want to get into your emotions. Let's have a plan. If the plan is he drops out and Kamala Harris steps in, she has access to the money, the coffers. We don't need to have an open convention. We don't need to do a bunch of last minute debates and and, and town halls and shit. Then I'm with you because that sounds like a plan. I don't need, I don't, I don't need y'all to feel great about any of this. Mm -mm. I just need, I need something that can happen that we can win with. Um, anyway, so Obama addresses these men in this, uh, and it's kind of like off the cuff remarks. Um, and I, I like they weren't like it wasn't part of his speech. Like I saw his speech, I listened out 45 minutes of his speech actually. Um, but um, there's a there's a few things that are complicated about it that I do want to discuss. Uh, one of the things is um, there's some a lot of grifters jumped on this. I can see that, and I don't know if people aren't noticing that or just their animosity towards Obama and this whole like anti daddy complex niggas have about him or whatever. I I'm not sure. Do they know? that that is happening at the same time because while I also bristled at his comments I I I think it plays into the hands and th put it this way the reason I bristled at his comments is that it plays into the hands of these grifters and these these people who are dissenters and contrarians and driving a wedge in the black community between black men and black women and um that's the reason I bristled at his comments because it's this is a layup that he turned into something more difficult that people have now been arguing about for four or five days online that I don't think deserved even attention. I don't mm -hmm. I don't think these people deserved attention. Agreed. And some people are gonna disagree with that. I hear you, but I then we just have to disagree. I do not the same way that I delete the comments on our YouTube when someone writes some pejorative thing about you know Kamala Harris or some Republican talking point about the Democratic plantation or whatever they want our attention they they like that we're like getting upset they like that we're talking about mm -hmm. it and what I mostly feel is an anger that these these few black men have successfully stolen the attention that should be going to the 80% or more of black men who are second to black women only in voting for Democrats. Right. I don't like, and I've been very vocal about it the whole time. I don't like this narrative of, you know, these black men, these Jamals are letting us down. That's not fucking true. Yes. How many, how many exit polls do we need to see? Right. How many, like how, like, I know why people want it to be true. It's because some people have been fighting in these gender wars for years, and they've now determined black men are the fucking worst. And as a reaction to these to these black men who are anti-black woman, it's like an equal opposite reaction. Like, well, since I've been fighting on the internet, here's a thing where I can make you feel bad. Mm -hmm. But the internet is like a, a warped mirror. It's not giving you what 
is actually real. It's a warped version of reality. Mm -hmm. The fact is the majority of black men are voting Democrat that the ones that vote. Um, the loud 10%, 8%, whatever percentage is that is not, do not deserve all this fucking attention. I don't care if they're celebrities. Ice Cube don't represent me. You know, that's his, his that's his rich ass opinion. He'll be okay either way. But for the vast majority of us, we're not on that. We're working class for most black men. Mo you just can't like, so, so anyway. There's a troll element here mm -hmm. that is getting to run with this, getting attention, getting retweets, blowing up off of this. They're fucking coons. Like, and I'm not talking about all, all these black men. I'm talking about the ones who were coons before you even heard me this sentence, before Obama said anything. They're now using this clip to be like, look what Obama has done to black men. That's why I don't like his comments. Right, because they're already out there. And it's one of those things where not only with Obama's comments, it's the same thing that the news media was running like a while ago, uh, where they kept interviewing like black men for Trump and talking about how black men was the problem. I was like, none of this is true at all. Where are the articles that, like you say, states that, A, hey, black women number one, black men number two. Yeah, right. yeah, like, like y'all not doing those articles. Who does it? Who does it serve to propagate that huge, like this, to over exaggerate the disconnection between black men and women when it comes to voting Democrat? Who does that serve? Because I know some black men who are making money off of this, who are making getting clicks off of this. Um, I know the Republicans who are doing it, but there's like a bad faith. Like when I see some of the, to me, the worst grifting offenders in my opinion some of the least scrupulous people when i see you know nina turner acting like she gives a fuck about black men now try to like coming out of the woodwork like after she's tried to burn her own career to the ground and be like look what she's doing to black men what he's doing to black men see i'm tired of this and it's like girl you you didn't give a fuck about us now now that you can use this moment as a wedge here you come I'm sure the Green Party will pop up. I'm sure Cornell West will pop up. It's helping the worst opportunistic, grifting ass motherfuckers divide us. That's the reason I don't like the comments. I like if people are using this to measure Obama's blackness, but to be honest, that's the blackest he ever sounds to me is when he talks like this. And I don't mean that necessarily as a compliment, just more of a general. I know a lot of black people that think like this about other black people. Uh, yes, I do. Um, in a lot of ways where, mm -hmm. and, and I'm not even, like I said, it's not even a diss or an admonishment. It's just a fact. I, there's plenty of churches where you're preaching to the choir or singing to the choir, as Karen said the other day. <laughs> but there's plenty of churches where you are really talking, the pastor is talking to the people in the church about the people not that didn't go to church. Right. And they're being like, this is what's wrong with them niggas. This is why we better than them. That's what Obama was really doing. Now, look, them people ain't in church. So they can get mad. They can not get mad, whatever. If the goal is to get them to come into church, it's probably not going to happen by admonishing them and calling them out in front of everybody. Right. But it does make the people in the church sometimes feel better about being there. Like, mm -hmm. at least I'm not like those guys, right? The problem is there's no in-house, in uh, there's no inside conversation in this situation. It's going to go outside. Everyone's going to see it. Those people won't be motivated to come be called in. They're just going to use this moment to try to pull people out. Right. And that's what I'm seeing happen is people that otherwise were kind of just floating along, minding their business, even if they begrudgingly were supporting Kamala Harris or even if they were supporting her full throated. There's a lot of black men who it's, it's just, this is an on goal, meaning they're now offended and they weren't a week ago. They, you know, like the offense a week ago was like, maybe they're not hearing our issues as much as they could. That was what those guys were. But they weren't on some like, man, fuck the, why are they talking to us like this? You got a lot of well meaning good intention black dudes that are now feeling like, y'all, like, why am I in it? And that, and I do feel bad for those dudes. I don't, like I said, I don't really feel that way, but I, but I just don't emotionally get too invested in this shit in that way. Yeah, and, and also I think for me, 
it's like several things going on. At first, it was like, who do they do this for? They do it for those people. And also, they do it for a lot of the white Democrats. And I, I personally think a lot of this, and even I, I include the media in this, and, and I, I say I'm opening up my third eye, but this is how I feel. I think a lot of this is if this goes wrong and if this black woman don't win because y'all co-workers and friends and family decides they won't fucking Trump or don't or don't turn out to vote, we have somebody to blame. And I hate when they do this because it always is a quote-unquote excuse mm -hmm. to take the blame off of the white folks who is the majority of the population in this country. Like, like white folks are the majority of the population in this country. So when elections are won or lost or swung and all that shit, it ain't us. We don't, we, yes, we do impact it, but we are also a smaller percentage of the population. And out of, out of our percentage, we vote at a higher clip because the shit impacts us more. A lot of white people just don't give a fuck. Also, it's, we don't talk like that to anyone else. Right. And I'm sorry if this is disappointing for people to hear because I know people kind of just want to hear like rah, rah, cheerleader stuff. But I can never, I'm never going to come on here and not, at least be honest to try to be real about what's happening try to be realistic i haven't seen this approach to anyone else nope i haven't if y'all if, if i'm mistaken let me know but i don't see this like latino men do not vote this way no nope. in the numbers that black men vote mm -mm. white men definitely don't uh asian men don't I don't see anyone being like, what the fuck is wrong with y'all? Get your shit together. Right. I don't, I don't understand why you would reserve this message just for black men when it propagate when it propagates the myth that black men don't do enough with their vote, that they don't care, that they somehow are anti-democrat, that they're all gonna go Republican. Uh what I think is interesting is that we actually had the exit polls from 2024 that showed or 2020, 2020, that even when Biden won, every demographic had more people vote for Trump. Every, like a percentage wise, every demographic. That's black women too. Every demographic did, which is a sad thing to say about America. Right. And everybody voting. But people don't, like at least the politicians who are trying to garner votes, they don't admonish those people. No. I remember Obama stumbled in 2007 with a moment where he said, about white people in middle America, basically, like they clutch and they they clutch their God and their guns, and he fucking apologized for that shit. He didn't say nothing wrong, but he apologized just because of the way it came across. You shake the you, you have a beer summit with a cop who clearly did some racist shit that that like he was wrong for what he did to Skip Gates, but you have a beer with him because it for the good greater good of the nation or whatever. It's right. like let's just fucking squash this shit. It's not worth it. Blah blah. blah. We the only demographic that is like, man, fuck that. It is worth shitting on y'all. I actually don't think it is because this is the third or fourth time we've had one of these distraction moments where people can't see the bigger picture. And I'm a bigger picture guy, meaning there is not anything that he said that offended me. There's nothing he said that made me be like, I won't be voting then. Right. Nothing. I'm not like that. I'm willing. I'm like, okay, that's just his fucking hang up about it. Okay. So that's that's one thing. The other thing is in these myth moments, these mythical moments where people start lying, people will say shit like, "Well, he doesn't help black people. He he only talks to black men when it's time to admonish us and when it's time to vote." That is not true. No, that's not true. That is not true. He's had this program first from from his beginnings as a community organizer to now, even now, he has this program, My Brother's Keeper, which. A lot of people shitted on him at first because they said it's no, there's not enough black girls in the program. Uh, people won't remember this because they don't have, they have short yeah, memories. Yeah, but it's called my I, brother's but I keep. Yeah, it's fine. There's black girls in the program, by the way. I actually did. Ah, we did the okay. research. I pulled it up on this show live on the air before. But the point being, he's had that program forever, and it's a outreach program directly to young black men that he has mentored. Because people will say stuff like, well, he clearly, he's not meant to, he's not, he only sees black men as just that and the other. I'm like, I don't think it's that. If I have to psychoanalyze him, my biggest thing would be, I don't think he sees black men necessarily as his peer group. And I don't mean that as he has no black friends, but like, 
when you're the first fucking black president of America, how there's not a lot of rooms you can walk in and feel a shared experience with any right. like there's no right. other black men that's gone through that in America. Period. He's mm. the only one. It's a yes. club of one person. Yes. And a lot of the myth making around a politician of his figure has been like, hey, this is a lesson we can learn from. This is an example we can hold ourselves to. This is what we tell kids to aspire to. Here is proof you can do what people thought was impossible, Barack Obama. And that is true. But it is also kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy that he would have to communicate to other black men in many ways as the example, not as Barack Obama, Barry from Chicago. He's gonna always be like, I represent an ideal and I'm going to always be pushing that ideal to other black men of like, we got to get our shit together. You can be like me, but you got to be focused. You got to do this. That's what he's done for at this point. See, 2008, 2024. So I don't know when my brother's keeper started, but let's say it was 2008. It's 2024. So you have at least 16 years of him being like, this is his contribution to helping black people and specifically black men out. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't, I think it's just easy to get into these hyperbolic assumptions. I do not assume that he has any animosity towards black men. I don't I believe agree. that. I do not assume he just wants black men for the vote. I don't assume that. I don't believe that it either. Um, there are some ways in which when he was given his comments, I agree with him in some of his comments. Now, that that is not to say I would I think he should have given those comments at that time. That is to say, if you told me, Rod, how do you feel about that small percentage of black men who refuse to vote for Kamala Harris? Some of them even haven't voted for Obama. And in the wake of a Trump second presidency are like, I don't know about this. How do you feel? I feel how he felt. What he said is how I feel. I think that is ultimately stupid. I think that is ultimately a failing mentally to, to support this man. If that's what you have decided to do right. to sit this out. I also think is a failing. If that is what you've decided to do, I don't agree with it. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I'm not going to try to make you feel better about it. Mm -hmm. I think you are wasting your time, wasting your vote. And I think you're putting us in peril. I think I would think that of any person, honestly, mm -hmm. all the people, um, and I do think a lot of people, not just black men, their real problem is this is a black woman. They're not going to come out and say that. Right. Obama can use the stick. He can be the one to say it because she damn well can't. Mm -hmm. She can't go anywhere right now and say what the truth is, which is the hand, the holdouts that are saying bigoted shit online, the ones that are, that are that are just, you know, she's a terrible candidate, but they, but it not acknowledging that Trump is a much worse candidate. Right. Meaning I'm just going to pretend this other thing isn't happening so I can only be critical of one side. I'm tired of it. It's lame. It's corny. It's fucking predictable. It's not, it's not well reasoned. It's not very well principled in my opinion. It's just a waste of fucking time. It's the same as being Byron Donalds to me. It's a troll situation. I understand some people need to pound their chest and get that out. Once again, I ain't, I'm not really like that, and I don't really have to respect that, and I'm just not going to engage with that. Like, whatever you need to do to feel more like a man in this situation and like an individual, I, I just I – this isn't one of those times for me where I, where I can respect that. I don't see that you're being an individual. I don't see that you're being more principled. This feels like a – Everybody knows you cook chicken to 165 degrees situation and you like, well, I like my chicken 130 and ain't nobody going to tell me what to do. That's how this feels to me. Well, I'm like, OK, go die. Go right. get the salmonella. <laughs> get sick. But I'm like, I'm sorry that, that the menu didn't have a bunch of different choices. But if you're going to get the chicken, you should go ahead and get it at the right temperature. It's not you're really not proving shit by, by sitting this one out to me. I think that's how bad this situation has gotten in America. If this was even, um, and there, look, there's no Republican I'd vote for, but like, I could understand if we were talking about a, uh, uh, if Nikki Haley was on the ballot, 
I might even understand people being like, well, look, man, I, Kamala's not good enough for me. And Nikki Haley got some good ideas, like, or something where she's tried to say something. This is not what's happening. So I think um, the lies about Obama, they, it's just, they don't, they don't run with me. That's all. Like, it, you can call him corny, say he's not your type of nigga. I, I see that. I, I don't think there's a president of America. I don't think anyone can be president of America and be my type of guy. I don't think right, it's not a my type of guy job. Mm -mm. You know what I mean? Like they not going to hook any of my homies up with the white house. It's just, it's not, that's that I understand what that job is, you know? Um, and I'm not looking to hire a friend for that position. It's not, you know, the same motherfucking McDonald's or whatever. So, um, I think that that myth making that lie that that persistent like he ain't for the people or whatever I, I don't know whatever um but the the erosion of it's deflating it's the erosion of um positive momentum yes i can see that yes. yeah i don't see how people because i've seen people fighting and then they're just calling black men like you know weak and bitches and stop catering to these niggas and all this stuff um and and they're not making any real delineation or, or exception they're not being very specific it's being very generalized I, I don't know why everybody's doing this you could and maybe it's because the guy who said it didn't set the tone right but all you got to do is be like we just talking about a handful of brothers a really small percentage and i really think we could nip all this in the bud. If you like, I really think if he would have sat there and said, I'm not talking about y'all in this room, y'all doing the right thing. Y'all where y'all supposed to be. It didn't, it, it killed it. Mm -hmm. I appreciate y'all. I, I call the service. This is what we need from our community. Y'all are leaders. I want y'all to go back into your community and we have some brothers that are holdouts. We have, and he can say everything he said from that point on exactly yes. the same. Yes, sir. And and I feel like everybody that is in good faith would have said, I see what he means. I see where he's coming from. He's not talking about, this is not admonishing black men. This is admonishing those niggas. And for those that don't think he should have to say that, I present to you where we're at right now with y'all fighting on the internet about it. Right. Clearly, he could have said that and been better. This is why I said I hold myself to a higher standard then people hold me to sometimes because I remember when I said that black men are the white people, a black people thing. And I was like, man, I shouldn't have said it that way because it caused a lot of anima. And they're like, but it's true. It's just about privilege. And I said, I know I spent a lot of time trying to explain that to people. But if, if the message won't connect, even with the people that in good faith come to the message, that's on the messenger. Yeah. yeah. I can't, put the customer isn't wrong in this situation like if if you're courting the vote if you're trying to reach somebody and 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 it doesn't work or people are put off by it you can't just be like well i said what i said that's not how voting works and we wouldn't let that happen with any other demographic or when it did happen if you lose everybody's gonna go back and go why did you do that you lost the election that day i just don't see the I don't see the positive aspect of this. Um, so that's how I feel about that shit. Um, that being said, Kamala Harris comes with the carrot, right? So Obama was the stick. She got the carrot. Now, I feel like that's political strategy. I think that's smart. I, I, I agree. Um, so she put out like a plan called, I believe, the... Um, the opportunity agenda for black men. Um, and it's highlights like uh, I saw five major things in it. Here are the five. Providing one million loans that are fully forgivable for black entrepreneurs and others to start a business. Uh, that and others is how you get it through. Um, is how you get it through. Congress. No, not Congress. It's how you get it through Supreme Court. For yeah. those, yeah, and others, yeah, I'm about to go through through why it's written this way, but also I'm gonna have to go through why it, I really don't think it's gonna matter. But okay, so a million loans that are fully forgivable for Black entrepreneurs and others to start a business. Um, my guess is they're just gonna give it to Black people and a handful of others, 
and and they'll just be like listen we didn't say only black people so don't you know the heritage foundation when they do sue us about this will not be able to win hopefully but who knows with this supreme court two championing education training and mentorship programs to help black men get good paying jobs and high demand industries that lead their communities including pathways to become teachers you mean like my brother keep my brother's keeper you mean a program we already have that's been there that these motherfuckers just have decided to ignore or be ignorant of or many 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 other plans that also do this like this is like I'm not upset with the list I'm upset that this is bad faith trolling that has gotten to the fucking White House right three supporting a regulatory framework for cryptocurrency and other digital assets so black men who invest in and own these assets are protected Th this one for me is it, it okay so it sounds worse than it is first of all crypto being protected is more of a like how we can keep y'all from getting fucking scammed uh, in the crypto market yes because because the crypto shit is mostly a scam the wild wild west yes but three uh the the this number three I, I, who are these niggas who asked for this and i'm not saying that rhetorically someone decided this was the plan for black men and it wasn't Kamala Harris it mm -hmm. wasn't her team no you somebody know team somebody that has been complaining this whole time saying y'all not doing enough for black men set their ass in a room with some demands and one of the demands was fucking crypto no not trying to find out nobody give a fuck about crypto how is this serious right this is not serious this is a waste of fucking time it is and that's something that that is not even specific to black men. Every all these mother, a lot of white boy bro dudes do the crypto. That's not a mm -hmm. black man thing. Four, launching a national health equity initiative focused on black men that addresses sickle cell disease, diabetes, mental health, prostate cancer, and other health challenges that disproportionately impact them. Love that. That's actually really cool. Uh, reminds me of the black maternal health thing. That's a great idea. How it's gonna work, I don't know. But that's a great idea. Maybe it's PSAs. Maybe it's uh, changing the age of screening. Maybe it's changing recommendations. I, I, something great could happen from that. Uh, that is real. That is tangible. And I like that. People, I'm sure people are going to downplay that. Five, legalizing recreational marijuana and creating opportunities for black Americans to succeed in this new industry. That's already on the agenda, right? Legalizing marijuana has been on their agenda for years at this point for Democrats and for Biden specifically and now Kamala Harris. Um, what that is a direct result of is the misinformation about her where people are like, you know, she locked up thousands of black men for weed and it's not true. Mm -mm. That feels like misinformation one. Misinformation made it far enough to the White House that she now has to go she has to push something out that she already was doing and be like, but it's going to help black men. Why is it black men? That helps everybody that's been locked up for weed. Everybody that smokes weed. Recreational weed is not just a black thing. Mm -mm. Um, you know, thank that's and it's only five of these. Thank God child support isn't on there. But this is my problem with the black male agenda shit. It either turns into stuff that they're already doing and y'all just didn't do any fucking research and aren't aware of which is on you right because it's not if i'm aware of it you could be aware of it yes if you these are not to secret be. programs mm -mm. these are just things niggas is mad about and don't fucking look up right the second part of this that bothers me is two or three of these feel like bad faith lies like the 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 cryptocurrency thing like why is this even on the table the marijuana thing is not that's that's it turns into these weird stereotypes it's like when um it's like when there's a contingent of black men out there that are very vocal online and they say they want the um and who knows how many of these are real people real accounts i just know this is what we see um uh, they keep going we want like child support amnesty or something do you hear yourself? That's the black man agenda. I mean, the black look, man agenda is you look terrible. Paying child support is not a thing a black man should have to do for his fucking kid. And black men out of all the men 
they are like number one when it comes to like marrying within their race. They number one are like being present in their children's lives. You know, like like they actually are number one. So it's the same thing. It's this fucking small ass ain't shit niggas just fucking complaining. Yeah. Now, like I said, it's like nine pages. It goes into detail, but these are the five that they've highlighted. It's on the first page. Um, it really goes into how bad Donald Trump is and whatnot. Um, and it goes into details. Like it's not just a uh, nebulous, you know, providing 1 million loans that are fully forgivable up to $20,000 for black entrepreneurs and others who have historically faced barriers to start a new business or growing an existing business in partnership with trusted organizations like mission driven li- lenders and banks with a proven commitment to their communities. Like this is something we're a small business. We're a black owned business or some, maybe we got for some reason go, we need a twenty thousand dollar loan that's fully fucking forgivable, and we can get a studio and a producer, and we can fucking get multi camera setup and all this oh, shit. shit. Right? I mean, like that could really help a lot of people. That's not necessarily something that is um, just pie in the sky, but it's the fact that one, some of these programs have have existed already, but two. It's not a black male specific thing. Mm -mm. And so a large part of this has been the denial of black men to accept that what uplifts the black community uplifts us. Yes. And that is where we get to seeing ourselves as a part from the community and not a part of the community. This is the crux of when I was talking about this, the white men of the community, like seeing ourselves, the white people. This is kind of the crux of that entitlement. I'm not saying that this is the same as a white person, blah, blah, blah. But my point being the entitlement of things that help our community don't help us. Right. So black maternal health somehow doesn't help black men, but it helps black women. That's not true. Who's born from black women? Who's married to black women? Right. Who's fathering these children with black women? Right. Who wants to see these mothers alive, these sisters alive, these wives, these girlfriends? Who wants to see them alive? For a large part, it's us. Yes, sir. So to see something like that and be like, but what about me? Is kind of weird to me. Um, not to there's some dudes that are now more on board. Fuck it, I'll just say names. Roland Martin, Bakari Sellers. I love to see how much they're on board with Kamala Harris. I think they're, I love to see it. But there was a time when they weren't necessarily on board. And I remember, you know, being a bit miffed with their like obsession with like, but what about the black man? And I'm like, I'm not sure how to tell you this, but when you see, when we saw Barack Obama winning, we weren't spending all this time no. doing a bunch of like, but what about the black women shit? And honestly, when a black woman brought that shit up, we acted like they were the enemy somehow. Like, what the right. fuck are you doing? Right. And so now the shoe's on the other foot and everyone's kind of acting accordingly the other way, where now it's like, well, what about the black men? And people are like, what the fuck are you talking about? You're the enemy right now. I'm not saying they're the enemy. I think that's going too far. But to not be able to see that her policies that benefit black communities will ultimately benefit black men as well feels like almost like a willful misunderstanding because I can't understand how you could arrive at that and the fact that they don't misunderstand it anymore now that she's given Roland Martin an interview now that um, she is the presidential candidate now that Bakari Sellers seems to be working with the campaign I mean, I guess it's more easy for those dudes to come around because they kind of have more access than they had on the outside looking in. A lot of this conversation is actually about access, but it's taking the point. It's looking like it's about politics, but it's not. And that's not that's not a diss. I think black a lot of independent black media spaces need access and should be getting it. And we haven't been. And it's not fair. Um, And like there's 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 black radio stations there's a bunch of stuff that black people could be getting from this campaign that they aren't and this campaign raised the most money ever so there's not a lack of resources to put money into these black spaces to make to get ads to do interviews and all that stuff so i this is not me trying to make it sound shady like they just mad they didn't get access look if they can find time to fucking help the breakfast club or some shit or to to advertise 
on a, on, on white podcast networks, I don't know why they can't do it for black podcast networks. To me, it makes no sense. Um, and it wouldn't cost as much money and it wouldn't take any time. So if I can look on my fucking TV screen to see 12 ads, one of them, they could, they could be doing this. So, um, anyway, my point being like, um, these plans to help will never look completely like, and only for black men. Right. You're not, you're not going to get that. I do not know what people do not understand the way things are set up now. Now, the way the Supreme Court is set up now, the way they keep fucking shooting down everything that has anything to do with anything that actually is specific to a group right now. You have to make this shit as vague as possible, purposefully and strategically, if you want the people that you want helped, helped. And it's very, very frustrating for me to sit back and sometimes I'm like, how dumb are you? Like, like I had to be like this, like, how dumb are you? Are you paying any attention to the climate? Are you paying any attention to what's going on? Are you paying any attention of the shit that's being taken, taken to the Supreme Court and fucking shot down? Are you paying attention? Because if you are, you would understand that it's a strategy behind the things that they do. And that's when my frustration comes in. Even when Barack Obama was in office, they requested this same thing. Why? It doesn't make sense. Well, also, that's another part of this problem is bad faith people are being mixed in with good faith people. And that can't really be unclouded right now. The bad faith people are going to always find a reason to not vote for um, Kamala Harris. And another thing I think people just haven't... I think there's a, a contingent of good faith people not just black men people who believed in barack obama to some sort of almost deity degree in my opinion Mm -hmm. or some like a sainted figure and barack obama will not see it this way because he's in it but the enthusiasm of 2008 wouldn't even be here for him meaning if he was the candidate running right now in 2024, it wouldn't be the same. It wouldn't, it might be about a, the most you could hope for is a Kamala Harris level of enthusiasm. Yep. I don't, and I'm not sure he could achieve that right now. Nope. She has literally raised the most money ever and she keeps breaking the goal and she keeps raising money fast. Like even at this juncture where we're less than a month out, momentum feels like it's slowing is the money and the, and the, and the, and the campaign is not slowing. So I think he's, and he might, you know, I don't think he's wrong. Like I said, I agree with a lot of what he said. I don't think he's wrong that there's a contingent of brothers that just see a black woman and go, fuck that. I've heard black men say as much. So, so I'm not going to sit up here and cry Pollyanna and sit up and gaslight and pretend that that's not part of it. It's a part of it. I've seen people be like, black woman ain't never going to win. Why should you run for it? You know, like I've seen those comments, you know, I've seen, uh, you know, the lies that were focused on her being a black woman, meaning you can't trust her. If she was a black man, you could. I've seen that shit. Um, But there is this, I think, lack of acknowledgement from Obama that his star is not as bright as it was. And for many different reasons, I'm not even saying self-inflict. I think it's just literally you had to go do the job. Right. Running for the job, fun. Doing the job, not so fucking fun. Right. Now you have a track record where people can stick shit to you and be like, hey, you didn't do this. You did do that. Um, So I just think that that part is interesting for it uh, as well. But um, yeah, this agenda, whatever, I don't think it's going to satisfy the troll people. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think it sounds more to me like the worst voices got fed. And I don't like that. Um, I don't like that at this moment when unveiling something like this should have felt like, like a, it should feel like a yes, like a, like a, that's what I'm talking about. We let, we have the support of this administration and we're supporting this administration and we're going to help this candidate win. And this is, and she's going to help us when she gets in office. That's how this moment should feel. When you unveil something like this, we should all be like, that's what I'm talking about. Instead, it feels like Ice Cube won. 
You know, like he asked for the the fucking platinum plan, and she gave her version of the platinum plan, and these motherfuckers are not gonna read it, and they still gonna say I ain't voting for. Her. Okay. That's how it feels to me. Agreed, and is 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 one of those things where I think for a lot of people that were kind of anti her, mm -hmm. you know, before she you know she got the position and things like that. I also think for some of them, particularly in the media sphere and things like that, I also think a lot of them, almost like the Cornel West thing, they wanted approval. Like, it's like, oh, if you're going to do these things, you got to quote unquote go through me. Like, I am the one that, you know, should be speaking on your behalf. And if I don't speak on your behalf, you're not quote unquote validated in the black community because I am not the one speaking on your behalf i am not the one with the microphone in my face so you know i am not the one getting accolades for for helping quote unquote push put you and push you into this position you know and i think the same thing with with, with obama is like people actually are under the illusion in my opinion that all these fucking ridiculous ass demands actually validate them and and and, and, and gives them a a, a, a a feeling of self-assurance and give them a a a, a, a I, I'm better than y'all you know type yeah, of thing and, and it's very frustrating and I'm you know I, I'm trying not to say anything that is too inflammatory but there it's like people lose focus of the fucking picture so easy mm -hmm. and I feel like Twitter aids in that and I, I fight my hardest to not contribute to that but like god damn there are Republicans that understand this moment more than some of my fellow voters yeah. that's supposed to be voting Democrat like how the fuck do they get it and you don't right Dick Cheney get it and you don't Geraldo Rivera gets it and you don't Th like this I don't understand why why you think it's still there's time to 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 play to machinate right there's not right. it's just get down or lay down do we want to win or not right. come through the fucking portal you see on your left cap that's all we have time for we don't have time for a this and so like i said ultimately that's what my disappointment in obama's comments are i it's not i don't give a fuck about listen I, I can't speak for these other people, these other dudes. And maybe maybe somehow I'm just so fucking much mentally tougher than these people. I don't think that's what it is. I don't know. When I tell you not offended in the least, could not get angry about this, do not give a fuck about that shit. That, the, the comments mean nothing to me. I've heard them before. I don't even disagree when it comes to certain type of brothers. He's absolutely on point. And some brothers, maybe they needed to hear. I don't know. The problem is the moment that is created out of this is just a big ass distraction, a big ass momentum bomb that just goes into the middle of this. What was essentially a party, a coronation, a bunch of people coming together that weren't even supposed to be on the same side who decided, yo, we're in this. We're going to we're going to win this for each other like even if you are one of these people that think she's not a good candidate well how she was getting good better in these polls she was doing better with the money raising why because people were doing it for each other then and honestly that's what the fuck y'all should have been on the whole time it should have never been about one transformative figure that's what the fuck is wrong with american politics as is it's what the fuck is wrong with american voters as is i don't subscribe to it i don't really give a fuck about people that subscribe to it i do look down on people that just believe that type of shit mostly because it's like saying you believe that you're going to vegas and you're gonna hit the lottery or it's like you believe in the shell game that the fucking that the marble is under one of the shells you're playing a red game that's not what that is you can't you believing in the game isn't how you win the game and so i don't mind the idea of people feeling um enthusiastic excited or whatever but when in moments like this when you should be able to see a bigger picture and be like man fuck that shit he said something i don't agree with i'm moving on he or he could have said it he could articulate it different or better i'm moving on that's how i did like i just brushed it off i was like he said what 
Okay, let me go play the climates. Okay. Interesting that where it cuts off. I still haven't heard the entire clip. It cuts off right when he starts saying something positive about the brothers in that room. I do find that interesting. And I do, I do think a little bit less of the people who get led astray because how many fucking times do we have to go through someone showing us a, a part of something out of out of complete context and we just run off and do their bidding for them. But 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 I'm not I think it's totally reasonable that those people got upset with what they saw. I think it's totally reasonable to feel a way about what he said. I, it's like I said, I don't like it myself, but mostly I don't like it because we got to this moment. And now we're not talking about, honestly, we're not even really talking about policies. These policies they drop, they're already moving the goalposts so they don't care. It was not about the policies. No, it no, it it really was not. And you know, my thing is I'm with you. It's very, very simple to me. And when you try to make shit simple, I think people purposely uh complicate shit on purpose. Like when I when I'm like, do you want to win or not? But I don't like, do you want to win or not? Yeah. But she didn't do, do you want to win or not? But they didn't hit, do you want to win or not? Like, like at the end of the day, like, like that's the foundation. You know, they were like, Republicans are supporting her. Don't give a fuck. Do you want to win or not? After the election, it goes back to fuck them. They're not getting any, any positions of power. They're not running anything or any of that shit. Do you want I, to win or not? What's honest though, Karen, if they get positions of power, guess who that's on? It'll be on us as voters. Right. Because if you send her to fucking to president and she wins, but we send her with fucking 52 Republicans in the Senate and still a vast majority of Republicans in the in the Congress, in uh, the House. Guess what you just did? The same thing you did to Barack Obama. Like it like. I don't know. There's big picture shit that's happening. I don't see people doing. Um, and, and look, like I said, I don't bang on Obama like most motherfuckers that mm -hmm. you know, like like a lot of people do. I actually find him to be a very. Uh, I think he was still the best president I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. Um, I still think he did that job scandal free. Um, I still think he did that job exactly as he said he would do it. I I don't. Wherever this whole like disappointment and whatever I think was a lot of projection onto him. Um, and I don't like I don't have the issues with him that other people have. And that's fine. They can think less of me for that shit. But guess what? It the point uh, the finger pointing right back at your ass. I think less of you. Um, that being said, tonight he tweeted a couple hours ago. At Kamala Harris has a plan that will lift up black men and their families. She laid out some ways to give black men the tools to build wealth, achieve financial freedom, lower costs. Read the plan. KamalaHarris.com slash agenda. That's all that need to be said. That's all that need to be said. We don't we and I'll, I'll say this as an example myself. I can spend this whole podcast every fucking day banging on that 8 to 15 percent of black men who are fucking Trump or not voting or hoteps or FBA or whatever. I could do that every day. I have the fire in me and I am always ready to pull the trigger on these niggas. Yep. But honestly, it ain't fruitful. Mm -mm. It, it, like there are so many of these niggas who have written in our show or left a comment or something. Mm -hmm. I ain't reading them. I'm mm -hmm. blocking them from our YouTube. Yep. I don't under if I can do it, then I don't see why someone that is trying to help her win the presidency can't see that too we can't give these guys oxygen because oxygen feeds their fire they're not good faith people they're not going to hear you out and go well thank you i just wasn't thinking of it that way mm -mm, they don't care they're just gonna use your comments as fuel to build to breed more um whether it's disinformation whether it's eroding the uh morale of people who are excited whether it's and now's my chance to get in my long list of critiques on just the Democrats, it just helps them, and I don't want to help them in any way, ever. You know, I they already got enough bullshit with their like soapbox, privileged ass, live it pie in the sky as bullshit. 
Cause it's not even like these motherfuckers complaining are the working class people they talking about. It's the it's the it's everybody represents the working class when they want to talk critically about Democrats. They always pull that bullshit out of their pocket. But at the end of the fucking day, you're not driving the bus, bro. You got it. You made it. You're now using the people on the bus against her. That's the same thing Charlemagne does. Hey, I'm not saying this dumb, ignorant shit and misinformation. It's what people think in the barbershops. Well, nigga, you're not in the barbershop. Act accordingly. So I'm not going to come on here and promote that shit either. But so my point being, I don't think it's even fruitful to give these guys that much attention. There are so many coons and so little time. I could be on this show pulling up clips of someone telling me, that's why I'm voting for Trump every fucking day. We could be on here with several of these people. But you know what? They want that shit. Yes. The the anger and the outrage is nothing but a click to them. Sharing them, lifting them up is nothing but a click. And when I see these five points, when I see Barack Obama do that speech, it pisses me off only because I not because of to me, those trolls got the biggest oxygen in the campaign. They got the most attention they're gonna get. And now here we are going they're on our timelines. Their, their their clips are being shared. They're making speeches. They're they're you know what I'm saying? They 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 now have a bigger platform to erode goodwill than they had before. They were essentially being ignored, sleeping, or just not relevant. And somehow we have pulled this campaign down into this bullshit. Um, she's going on the shade room. I think she may have already done it. Um, and I'm not. I think once again, I think what she's doing with this campaign is savvy. Um, I think going on the shade room is actually really fucking smart. Um, and the reason I think it's really same thing smart, with call me daddy, call her daddy, call her daddy. But there's the same, but the re, actually is different than call her daddy for me. The mm. reason I think this is smart. Okay, the shade room has been one of the biggest anti-democrat candidate uh, propagators of uh, propagators of misinformation and just outright um, Trump right-wing talking points it's it's been a fucking shame they're they're transphobic they're uh anti-woman they're everything they're everything that i think is wrong with the internet um but you know why you know why the shade room is so huge because motherfuckers won't stop sharing it and so you could either and i've seen people make this argument of well just ignore them i actually think you're wrong at this point and it's not because to ignore them would make her basically in denial of reality. Black people online have decided these motherfuckers are winning. That they are a news source. Yes. And the thing is, these amateur outfit motherfuckers are not prepared to sit a competent candidate in the, sit there right in her face and deliver them Trump talking points. This will be the second or third time. All the smoke is one of these groups, these guys too. I know some people like them. I'm not saying there's nothing bad about them when it comes to just basketball and shit. But they've they've said some hotepian ass weird shit on that show before. But they couldn't do it in her face. They was they was they was looking her in the eyes, smiling and asking. Because all of a sudden she becomes real, asking layup ass questions because they're not really trained or informed enough to do that job. But they have enough integrity and they're grateful enough for the access that they won't do what Charlemagne does, which is also be uninformed, but bad faith, try to get a viral moment. I think the shade room is going to be the same way. When she's sitting down with that dude, he's going to be so happy to have his profile raised and be acknowledged by a, uh, by a legitimate candidate rather than just whatever, however he gets paid to do that Trump bullshit and to spread the, um, negativity that always goes viral he's gonna be so happy to sit across from her he's gonna do a layup and honestly that space doing a layup interview and those clips being on there even with the comments probably being ignorant as fuck is better for her campaign than what the fuck was was happening before trying not to acknowledge them as they just spread lies like trump gave us trump checks and 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 Biden and, and Harris did nothing for us, and the economy's terrible. So in those ways, I don't mind it because what did I say when we started this? I'm not emotional about this shit when it comes to this. I'm pragmatic. I want to win. That's a winning fucking move to me. 
what does it say about our society at large? Nothing, nothing good. Mm-mm. Nothing good. You know, this is Obama in 2008 figuring out to use social media and use email. This, like, am I, does it say something? It says something savvy about his campaign, but it says something bad about the state of our electorate when you need a 140 character tweet to convince you who to vote for. And it works. It does say something bad that we're not rigorous anymore. We're not we're not researched anymore. We're not learned anymore. We're not willing to go and, and do look at something long form anymore. We're looking for screenshots, memes, and pictures. But god damn it, if that's what the fuck people are doing to make it work, then go make that shit work. I'm not gonna sit over here and complain about Kamala Harris talking a podcast because in the meantime, you know what else she did? Go on 60 minutes. You know what she's doing? Going on Fox News. So she's talking to other journalists too. So let's not try to turn this into some like cherry picking just the bad shit that you don't like she's covering all the bases because she got the energy to do it unlike trump and unlike biden she can put the pedal to the metal and be campaigning 24 7 all the time yes because she's younger yeah she's younger and she don't have to run the country right now so i mean i'll put it this way if she loses it won't be for lack of trying and innovation um it'll mostly be for a lack of us us not focused on the bigger picture us choosing our selfishness over her, uh, choosing our selfishness over the country, choosing our selfishness, trying to what teach Democrats a lesson or some shit. I don't even know what the fuck that means. What does that mean? It'll be our failure if she does not win. And Barack Obama's comments aside, I or I shouldn't even say aside. Even in 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 proper context and everything, if mentally I. If you can't just move past that, I don't even understand what you think this election is about. Mm-mm. It's fine. And, and and also something else I realized too before we move on, a uh, lot of people are easily distracted. I've kind of realized that. It's like, ooh, squirrel, ooh, squirrel. Like, not, not squirrel, but ooh, his nut, his nut. Ooh, cookie, cookie, cookie. Like their minds are kind of all over the place because it's hard for people to focus on, I just want to win. It's like anytime anything happens outside of that, a lot of times I am like, okay, it happened and it's not going to change my vote, not going to change what I'm going to do, any of that shit, I'm still going to vote for her. But a lot of people are easily distracted and they love the distractions. Because when you're distracted, you don't have to really educate yourself when you're distracted. You don't really have to learn about the policies or the procedures. You can be very ignorant when you're distracted. Like, like, And I also think a lot of people like to be distracted because there's no requirements of you when you're distracted. When you're off doing other shit other than registering to vote, talking to your family and friends, you know, uh, pushing and, and telling the people that, you know, this out here being stupid, you know, family, friends, now just shut the fuck up and vote. That requires work, but it doesn't require a lot of effort in or energy to in, to uh, indulge yourself in these things that are distractions that at the end of the day won't fucking make a difference. Because you know what? In 48 to, you know, 72 hours, nobody give a fuck about Barack Obama's comment and we're going to all move on. Yeah, I, I'll... I'm not going to get into the the, the internet study today because I want to wrap this up. But I'll just say this to kind of close it out is um, the big picture is still the big picture. This document is nine pages. You can Google it. You can search it. It's on her her website. Um, Like I said, I think it's KamalaHarris.com slash agenda. If if, if send this to, to your black men that are detractors, Black men that were so turned off by Obama's comments. Well, Obama's not running. He is not. You're not voting for him a third time. This is Kamala Harris's campaign, and this is what she had to say. When she goes on all the smoke and talks to black men, when she goes on the shade room, share those clips. Okay? Yeah, this is what y'all wanted. I think she's being a great candidate by addressing this because much like going on the shade room i feel like she has to meet people where they are yes where black men are not all of them but enough of them are is in this weird arms folded she not like us as she ain't even black thing there's too many prominent black male voices that are getting too much traction saying stuff uh about her and I, i if if her campaign saw this as a weakness that needs to be addressed fine because honestly I've come full circle on it by the time we started to now. If her 
if we're going to look at going to get Republican voters as important, then this is what I want the campaign to do for that 2% of black men that are to hold out. Like mm -hmm. the 2% of the electorate, but the 8% of black men or whatever. Um, yeah, go get them then. Maybe this will convince some of them. I hope it does. I hope it does too. And so if this is if, if they're being genuine in good faith and this is the effort reading about how she's gonna help with employment and loans and uh and digital assets, um, um and and whatnot. If that's gonna be if you're gonna go read that and it's gonna change your mind or inform you, good. Because at the end of the day, everybody wants their Uh, it's funny. I was talking to the homie the other day and he texted me and said, uh, you know, looking at some of the discussion, he was talking about the WNBA, but he's like looking at some of the discussion around the WNBA. I I think you were on to something, but now it's everybody wants to be the white people of whatever group of people they are. Now, I think this is in reference to like some of the ways that black people were like bemoaning and decrying um like the, not just Caitlin Clark but like even if a media person just acknowledged like yeah she's the rookie of the year or mm -hmm. she's the, yeah, it she was like it, right? yeah yeah there was a certain level of like animosity towards people that were just saying to me factual things that weren't really about picking a side and he was like how greedy is everybody getting that that like they don't even want someone to acknowledge something truthful like this oh she's the first rookie to do this and they get and they're in the comments mad about it right right and um, I said, you know, I, I, I do still regret the way I said that because how it singled out. But the sentiment is real. Mm -hmm. And what it is, is in their own way, I think subconsciously in America, everybody wants to be white. And I don't mean they want to be white people. Everybody, because because America's built on this hierarchy with this lie that whiteness runs everything mm -hmm. at, at its core everybody in america sees that and once you see whiteness at work the concept not the people all uh, right the concept once you see it at work you realize there's really not a a, a better way to succeed in america it's why asian people were were down with the pulling affirmative action from college admissions because it was a way where Asian people could be white. It was why uh, Cubans vote Republican because they've been promised a level of whiteness. This is why certain Latino people that are white passing are like, I don't know, Mario Lopez. I'm going to roll with this whiteness. I'm not finna ride this Lopez shit out. And Lopez ain't doing that good for me. But the, but the motherfucking Mario is, is hitting. You know, um, and so whiteness is about emotions becoming stronger than fact. And in this voting process, I've said many times that white people are basically the only people whose feelings get to be facts in America. Mm -hmm. If they feel the economy is bad, we write and talk about the economy as being bad. Right. Even though statistically everybody's looking like, dog, I'm doing the best I ever have. Like, you know, you know, no, it ain't perfect, but, you know, but, I'm and doing we don't, good. And we don't question why they get that conclusion, right? right. We don't want to say, so what is it? And then they go, because I see brown people getting jobs. I see immigrants in, in the country. Yeah, sure. My salary is high as it was as it's supposed to be. Sure. Eggs and gas have come down to prices I can afford. But, um, I don't feel like I'm winning on this whiteness anymore. Right. So the economy is bad to me. Right. But I can't cash in on it. And we can recognize that in white folk. Mm -hmm. Like we, we go, that's a bad thing. That's not real. That's messed up. We don't like when our politicians pander to it. Right. A lot of us don't. But damned if that ain't what everybody wants. That Yes. Like, so yeah, when I, because they behave when I see, like they do. When I see some of the like, black male detractors it feels like i want that feeling that whatever i ask you for is something you're gonna at least acknowledge as good so 
even if someone says something like, I don't want to pay child support, I want you to acknowledge that like a real fucking task, like a real ask, like it's legitimate. And if you don't, fuck you. That's whiteness to me. That's that's greed. Because that's not a thing anyone should have, regardless right. of race. Right. You know, is is it, you know, so and, and I don't even I'm not trying to do this to single out black men specifically. I think like I, I just said Asian people. Like uh obviously in the past, Italians weren't considered white, Irish weren't considered white. Mm-mm. Everybody sees what whiteness does and they want access to it it's or the at least the treatment of it. And so I wonder if that's the crossroads that we're really at is this like, hey, man, we got to have this whiteness like we I I want crypto. It's like crypto does. Who the fuck? What percentage of black men is that even affecting? Right. Fuck it. I feel like it should be on here and I feel like it's a black thing to me. So make it happen. And now it's being acknowledged in the White House. Right. Which is the dumbest shit ever. Yes, I agree. So, all right, I'm not going to talk about anything else. We've already gone an uh, hour 10. Uh, this is a very special episode. If you if you like what you heard, share it. If send it to people. Yes. I think I've been as fucking fair and open-minded as I can. Do not write up here about nothing we didn't say. Do not write up here about some shit some other motherfucker said that, that wasn't said on this podcast because we're not here for the other people's shit. This is a show about us and what we have to say. Feedback should be about what we said and what the fuck we talked about. So please don't write up here and try to lump us in with some other motherfuckers. I didn't get up here and admonish Obama, talk down to him, any of this shit. I know people get in their feelings about that. Yeah. I'm not one of those people. Right. I like the first, the forever flow this. I love those motherfuckers. If I if I could, I put them, I, I put the pick the frame picture on my fucking wall. I, I, I'm that stereotypical about like, they didn't, like they was good to me. So I'm cool with that. But yeah, this I think I I think we tried to encapsulate a lot of different perspectives. And I know I talked a lot, but I've been thinking about this a lot and I knew this was a black man topic. So <laughs> let me at least fucking <laughs> and, I, and I and I threw my little black little woman's voice in there in the background. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh my God. All right, y'all. That's it. Thanks for listening. We'll talk to you next time. Uh, until then, I love you. I love you too. Bye. Bye.